Hello there everyone and welcome back to more Total War Warhammer. Our fight with Grimgore took a bit of an unexpected turn for my allies in the Camry have just barely, barely been able to take him out. Even though Grimgore was kind of the aggressor there and as a result we're making a big power play towards the rest of Grimgore's territory. As already I've gotten the region of the Marsh of Madness and this makes a very good staging point for me, both in the fact that it's a swamp area, so that hopefully will help in mitigating a lot of the attrition damage I have to go through here, especially when playing on defensive. I'm hoping at the very least. It remains to be seen if that's actually the case or not. And even more so, I think I'm finally ready to get in a position to grab the Dwarf Goucher finally, as opposed to just teleporting there, as I probably realistically should have done. But at least this gives me another focus to maneuver with Queek. And at the very least I should get this this episode as apparently my odds of getting this weapon are very likely. And then I was hoping to just double click and take me to the other region but don't do that. And then otherwise we're going to have to make our way west into Kimri territory so that's not a big threat. And grab our warp shard armor which is going to be pretty one side too. I think this is going to be a good episode, we're just going to have to maneuver around a bit with Queek. And at the same time, I do want to get my engineer ready to protect my northern borders with that said. And ideally, realistically, let's see, what is my capital? No, oh, that's Krasik Eight Peak. I'm just wondering, do I have a high tier capital now? You could do. I am just wondering... What I'm thinking is I want to replace the one Plague Claw Catapult I'm missing. And I think this might be better. That Since I'm going to be going over this way regardless. To kind of get a local recruitment going. As opposed to relying on the Pox Cauldron. Since if I rem remember correctly. Yeah I already have one here anyway. So it doesn't really benefit me to have two of these in this region. I want to argue at least. It'll take a couple turns though but I'm going to demolish this. Replace with uh, a laboratory. I forget what the structure is actually called. And once I'm replenished and get my time to get another plate claw catapult, I should be all set. Otherwise, let's see. Queeks are removed. Let me just figure out who's left for this turn. Engineer, you're level 10. I think the best I could do with you is to just harm these heroes. Maybe get a level or two in if I'm so lucky. Sadly, it's a bit of a detour for you to go that way. As I don't think you're going to keep, keep up with this dang goblin war boss as a result of that. Warlock is replenishing, he's already gone. Assassin, there's not a lot of use for you down here. The honest truth of the matter is, and I, re I think Queek will inhabit this region so I could get another province bonus for this territory. Since this is the uh, only one I'm missing, yes. That would be nice, and with that said, let me just switch you over to help with my public order. Which should not really be an issue, but I don't know how the vampiric aura is going to affect things. As apparently it is hurting... No, that's for vampire accounts, never mind. I was thinking that would give me a negative modifier, but either way. I think we're looking good there. What else needs to be done? No, I'm not repairing that. You should be fine for a couple turns while Grimgore is busy licking his wounds, ideally. And I don't really have money. Although I would have liked to have gone to just select the, one of my lords, ideally. And income is always nice. Is that my priority though, especially for such a small amount of income? even though the growth will still be pretty handy for this region. As the Temple of Skulls is definitely going to be one of my main territories just because of the food it gives me. But I don't think growth's all that important otherwise. Let's just get Librius back up to standing and get the income back going. Although, I'm not liking these storm clouds here. I think that has something to do with the warp, the power of the warp in this area. And with that said, where is my lord that secured this? Oh yeah, he's way up here. It's been a couple it's been a couple of days. I kinda of forgot what I did with him. 
And now I think it's time to deal with these orcs once and for all, ideally. Who's left to move before we could continue, though? As I would love another lord, but I need the income to kind of justify it. As this one army alone that's just full of clan rats and a couple of rat ogres is basically taking up 3,000 upkeep for crying out loud. I don't think I can afford an extra army and still develop my infrastructure, sadly. Especially if they get captured like they did with the savage orcs, damn it. That was a little inconvenient, to say the least. And then otherwise, I think Queek's in good position besides maybe replacing some of the Skaven slaves and these older ranks and replacing them at some point soon. But I do want to get my census bears back since that was a big mistake, letting them die. And at the very least, I'll be in full standing with Queek. But otherwise, it's just upgrading them at this point. And making them a force to be reckoned with. Okay, what do we get here? Additional 8% chance, but who got this? How did I get this more appropriately is the question. Either way, Pox Cauldron. Demolished. We got an alliance between humans and dwarves, which they're just desperate. And Kazakh Enul, is this the one down south? No, we just deal with the orcs, which should be doable. I'm just not well positioned for it. And I kind of did not pay attention that there was actual hero down here. So let me help up my allies and just go and take care of him. Also, with that said, there was another thing I wanted to do that I completely forgot about. It may be more... Yeah, I think I want to do a trade agreement since I saw that was an option, although without a doubt they're going to benefit much more than I am. But if it helps strengthen my main ally, that can be pretty good for later on this campaign. I just don't know what their ambitions are otherwise. And then with that said... I am strength 14, warriors are strength 6, Eshin is strength 4, but they kind of like me. I could try and fight them. I could try and be allies with them. Especially with the 13th scheme to help. And sadly they get more income from me than I do with them. So I think it might be more fun to have a rivalry with them. And I don't want to help with their growth at all. Especially if the Chaos Forces are going to cripple them, that could be a nice benefit there. But I'll stick with allies with the Camry. I almost kind of forgotten, if I was so honest about these guys down here. Which I suppose I'll have to deal with pretty soon, but... I'm going to wait until my Under Empires are established, ideally. That way I can afford not having this Under Empire here for this settlement. It's just a question on how to best deal with said force, what would be the best kind of army, essentially. Otherwise, it'll take one more turn before I can get to the Dwarf Gouger. And I'm going to be fully replenished by that point too, so that works out nicely. And I don't know where exactly our goblin friend went. He went northward. And apparently he's completely gone. There you are. Maybe next turn I can harass you, but... With that said, how do I want to continue building you? Since you're more... For a lord, if anything else. You're not really ideal for what you're currently doing. Blocking the army could be really nice still. Otherwise... I'm just not- I haven't played around with these three spells enough to really know how useful they ultimately are to justify grabbing, but I do really like the potential of Death Frenzy. It's just, again, a question if I'm honestly using it properly in, like, the biggest horde possible as opposed to, like, my Rat Ogres. Although, not having a Plague Wheel, or- oh, he doesn't even have a mount option. Never mind that. I thought he was like the Plague Priest and had some kind of mount. Which would have helped him in buffing the Rat Ogres and any other mobile forces. Otherwise, I don't care about Krasik Peak, but I do care about Garrisons, if that's at all possible here. 
And Kazakh 8 Peak is going to be a great staging ground for me. Just look at all these slots I could have for structures. Kind of like what I'm doing with Lamia at the moment. But that is a long-term process still. As my main priority at the moment is just grabbing the upgrades for Queek. Now with this, I can increase my discoverability by 20. What would be a good option? As you're not a good choice, alas. 200 income sounds really good. Let me just look for options. Ideally something that gives me money would be great. And disagree. Yeah, duh. I think I want something that's tier 1. Unless I'm willing to upgrade my, what is it, murder holes here. And even then, I think I can only grab something that's tier 2, maybe tier 3. It's not going to be a very noteworthy boost. I think you're the best choice. 400 income sounds perfect. Yeah, and it basically will offset the extra 100 costs that I'm paying here for upgrading it. <clears throat> I think that is a good exchange. It did burn almost pretty much all my money, though, so it better pay off. It's only, uh, is it possible I could cancel that? I think I want to just stick with the one. Okay. Since, again, I'm planning on grabbing Krasic 8 Peak pretty soon, I don't think upgrading this is going to be... I don't think I'm going to get my money's worth out of this. Gain that to tier 3. And how much does this cost me? Just a thousand. I'm easily going to get my money back in 5 turns from this alone. This at least is worth it. And actually, I should be checking what their income is for Krasic 8 Peak. That's sub... Well, it's pitiful. I don't think I want to benefit off their income. Truth be told. So let's just get a flat amount. And that gives me some income to hang on to. Yep. Yeah, attrition. I don't like that. So we're going to do this old-fashioned way. And ideally, these are just badlands, which I do not like. And... Is there actually a route where I'm relatively safe? Well, ambush chance here. Although, it won't let me move there. There we go. I don't think... Yeah, this should not be strong enough to take me on without the settlement. So let's continue crippling them, just to make sure of that fact. They are sadly replenishing most of that, but... I... I'm hopeful that doesn't regenerate until my next turn, ideally. And you get immortality, congratulations. Queek is jealous of you, although Queek's always immortal. So I guess that's not really a concern. Now, Engineer's gone. Warlock? Yeah, I don't, I don't want you going through the Badlands, ideally. So we're just going to jump around. We'll let the Kemri enjoy their free territory. While I start replenishing up here. And again, make preparations for my siege weaponry. Where are you? I don't have the money, damn it. <laughs> and it would take three turns still. Alas. So a bit of a delay. Unless I'm willing to cancel my Under Empire upgrade here until next turn. Nope. That is the worst thing it could do. And that allows me to buy that right now. Don't want to. Yes, you're going to. I hate to break it to you. You don't have much of a choice. I think that's a good enough compromise. And who leveled up the chieftain? You are without a doubt my bodyguard, but it is a question how to best equip the bodyguard. Honestly, just straight up damage and attack might be better for him. If I were honest, but... I don't know if that's actually true or not, but I would love to give him Suspiciously Loyal to help keep this warlock in line. It's just a shame I had to sacrifice my art army. Mainly I feel like because I didn't have that dang warlock to kind of even the odds for that one 
ambushed sadly. I probably could have won that fight otherwise, if I was a little bit smarter. Otherwise, I already talked about where I was going. We already infested points in it. It's just again a question if it's the best use of of a bodyguard. That's the only thing I'm not sure about. It would be better to have like a storm vermin maybe just because of bigger body numbers, things like that. Otherwise, what is left? Oh, just repairing. We don't care about that. And I'm going to save my money because I don't have money for anything else. We look good. Let's continue on, shall we? The annoying little kids are continuing to steal technology from me. Although, if I'm completely honest, I don't think this is actually hindering me at all. It's just increasing their rate of technology. Which, considering their crippled state, is not really all that terrifying for me or something I need to worry about. But, again, let's do our allies a favor and get rid of this one boss boy. Next turn, anyway. And with that said, the Savage Orcs are on the move. I'm wondering, how do I have Fission here? I don't have an Under Empire. I am honestly wondering how I have Fission here. Oh, it's because it's a port. That might be why. Since that is, after all, an event that did trigger. But Kemri are fancy forward. They might have the standing forces to deal with them. if, Especially if they get to move first. And now I get an achievement for doing absolutely nothing. Just looking at the map. That confuses me a tiny bit, but we'll go with it. Now, I can't quite reach you yet. And I don't like you, but odds are not in my favor. And I'm wondering why that is. I know you're not quite skilled at it. I'm just surprised it's so low from what I'm used to. Oh well, I guess we abandon that plan for now. And again, I have three turns until uh, warp lightning throwers. So it might be more beneficial to go over here for now until it's built. And I'm still replenishing. Otherwise, Queek has his battle in mind. Assassin already went. It remains to be seen. They sadly are replenishing, so hindering them is kind of pointless. And I am suffering a little bit of attrition damage. And I could damage their walls, that's an idea. But I would also like the Warlock. Is it even possible for me to take them out though? They got a lot of Savage Orcs, which I don't know how they compare to regular Orcs. A size for lower armor. Yeah, lower armor, but they have physical resistance is what I think is going on there. And they have a very weak standing army. Could I take them out, though? As I am pretty generic already, and I'm going to take a lot of attrition damage. Yeah, I do need to re re reinforce and prepare for this. Or at least garrison myself, ideally. Well, it helps if I could. There we go, that's better. Maybe this is a terrible idea, but... Maybe I could damage the walls if I'm so lucky. No, that's just steal technology. I don't want to steal technology from savages. But, maybe the assassin can at least hinder him a bit. If I assault the garrison, that could help. That's probably more beneficial be just because of how much slower it might be to replenish them. I just have no idea what their garrison looks like right now, though. And that has me doubting if that was the right choice. Now, otherwise, I think Queek's all that's left. Yep, we can't hold it off any longer. Let's have our let's go get our dwarf gouger. I don't know what to expect here, but this should be fun. An enemy ambush. Interesting. This is I wonder if that's how it's supposed to work. 
If I'm honest, then I am currently losing food. I can't overlook that fact. Although this battle is going to help a little bit in this regard regardless. Die, die. And we're facing off against dwarves, but it should be well in my advantage regardless. So it tells me. But I don't know if that's accounting for an actual ambush, though. The dwarves are ambushing. If they know they have been manipulated by Grand Warlord uh, Nondwell as merely tools to test Queek, they care not. For they despise Headtaker more than any other Thagorak, Thagoraki. A chance to slay enemies whose features prominent, prominently in the Great Books of Grudges is not one that Dowie are willing to pass up. The ambush begins. <laughs> Dwarf things. Look how they scurry to us on such little legs, <laughs> racing to fight, fight. <laughs> we will give them battle. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll take back Galja and collect many beards this day, day. <laughs> no other rat must slay more than me, me. <laughs> Any who attempt to outkill Mimi will pay. Get them! Get them now, now! Alright, I apologize for not having the subtitles on there. Where would that be, though? Oh, show subtitles. There we are. But hopefully. Queek was clear enough to understand, but considering I don't get an opportunity to deploy, we're going to have to have a look at this and see. Bunch of miners here, which I think they are armored. They're damage dealers. And I think they also have breaching charges, or am I... No, they don't have a range attack, so I don't think they have breaching charges. But these guys can fairly easily be rushed down by my rat ogres and... Doom wheels, I want to believe. And these are just regular weapons. I'm just wondering how to best approach this. Are there any shields I need to be mindful of? Just these guys here. Which, regular clan rats should be good against them. And then archers over here. Or at least my slingers over here. Let's get ourselves acclimated and coordinated. I think these guys are better actually with my Rat Ogres and Doom Flares. Although, I am going to have to control them a little bit better, I think. My control has been a bit sloppy, but. I do have good high ground point. I can't really rush them or rush one flank very well because my Warp Lightning is going to get uh, wrecked as a result of that. Actually, let me just tell them to attack something that'll help some in this regard. Now, Queek and his bodyguard are group one. I just gotta be mindful of that. That is, it's a little more tricky to control that way, since I have to select Queek individually. And then it's a question: How do I use my clan rats? Well, really, I kind of split them up in two groups, don't I? That's kind of the more obvious route. Let's see, Storm Vermin, I don't want them, but I think these guys go down here, tie them up in, in preparation for the Doom Flayers. And I want to believe my Rat Ogres are good over here unless they do the Armor Piercing. Yeah, these guys are not meant to fight large creatures, which I'm hoping the Rat Ogres can do well against. And although they're not the best equipped to deal with them, Neither are they, I want to argue, because I don't really have armor. It's just going to be a little awkward because of the positioning, but... Where do I want my Plague Priest with that said? They are magically resistant. So I don't think I'm going to do a lot of damage there. I'm going to be relying on a lot of my buffing and piercing armor, which I think I want my Plague Priest down here. And Queek can come over here and help clobber these guys. Actually, let's see. The Lord's over there. And they have another Lord over there. There's two Lords, actually. 
So I can't go wrong with who I go choose to go after, in all honesty. And then it's just a question. What do I do with my range attackers? These guys got shields, they're a little more resilient. But my night runners are a little more flexible in their mobility that way. Just really hard to tell how my move ores are. So let's just play this out and manage it. I guess is the name of the game. Oh yeah, you want... I want you to deal with them. Okay, you guys get ready flanking. You crush the range units as much as you can. And have your fun with them. There's just a lot of groups to control. But, that should not be a problem in a moment. And turn off skirmisher mode, ideally. Now. Get them going. Get these guys in there. This is probably unnecessary with the amount of uh, planning I put into this, but... They did their attack there. Rat ogres are going. Now, where's the Lord? Get to their Lord and start killing them, ideally. Now, I would like to use Plague. I don't know if it's a good choice, but the amount of damage looks absurd if I do it right. Let's see, they're getting crushed. Yeah, you go after the miners. Surround, swarm, and murder. And, okay, my slingers are attacking. So they're doing what's necessary right now. I, I don't know how Queek is doing, but slingers are doing their work. They have the high ground vantage. Oh, more reinforcements. Get the warp lightning out of the way. Clean up this rabble here. And try and clean up this mess as quickly as we can because we got a bit of trouble ahead of us. And they got flame stars and all sorts of different stuff. Distract them, delay them, and quick finish off the Lord here as quickly as possible. Rat ogres, are Rat ogres are doing fine, but we need support. And clan rats are getting wrecked right now. Alright. They're getting roasted a little bit. They do have some range or physical resistance, which helps in that regard some. Now. Where can Queek go? Well, wherever the Lord is currently, which was over here, right? There you go, Queek. Have some, there's something for you to play with. And then, now, I can't really use control groups to manage this the best, because it's without doubt a mess. So we're just going to have to box select our way through here and hope we got some good engagements. Storm Vermin, Council Guard, you go over there. Let's see, what needs buffing? Let's buff them while they're all set. Probably could have placed that a little bit better. 
And go in attack there. And what are my Rattlegers doing? Just dying right now. They are completely routed. But really all that does is help us get some time. To just reorganize our army really. It doesn't do much else in that exchange. But Menace Below helps a ton. Now Queek, you're in the fray. Yes, go after the Lord. Their utter Lord. And hopefully that will really cripple their morale some. And if you can't crush these guys. Okay, they're broken. Probably the best I could ask for there. Rats are overwhelming. Got a nice flank attack here. Rat ogres are flanking there. The flame swords, their fire dwarfs aren't doing tremendous damage. Mainly because they're hitting scattered night runners right now. And they are completely shattered there. And that lore is also shattered perfect. Now again, it's just a question of how to best use my spells in such a mess. Although breaking their armor for the council guard is a great use here, I want to argue. Why are you guys transparent right now? Okay, I was wondering. You're just in sunlight. And apparently it makes you incredibly luminescent. Clan rat, you go up there, Queek. You did your job murdering the Lord. And their leadership should be crippled. Yeah. We're all good here, and they're shattered. They're shattered. Okay, we got this. I don't know how the damage or the control was, but... I like to think it was pretty good use of my cavalry, or my rat ogres and... Was it? War machines? I, chariots is what... The, that was the word I was trying to go for, dang it. It was completely eluding me since technically my rat ogres aren't really cavalry and my war machines aren't really chariots, are they now? They just serve that kind of role. Although, one thing I should have really paid attention to is who technically was considered the actual lord. Because then Queek could have probably gone after them first for, like, the leadership penalty. As I don't know if killing both of them was required for this or not. That's one thing I'm not sure about, and it's certainly not going to be a factor for multiplayer. When I eventually go over there, at some point. Although, the amount of money is terrible. That is much better, though. Now give me the Dwarf Gouger. Oh boy, we got company around here. Oh, it's an ambush. Okay, I was wondering what the heck that was. At first they looked like they were Chaos Warriors surrounding me. Which seems a little bit odd, but I'll take it. And let's see, good defender, perfect. Unlike our hesitant defender from before. And Dwarf Gouger's mine. Congratulations, Queek. Bonus damage against infantry. Extra strength fighting dwarves. Recruitment cost. And Dwarf Gouger ability. Very nice. Oh, he's already got it equipped there. And that's something I'm going to have to look at is oh, making sure all my lords are optimized with their proper equipment. That they could benefit from. But I think that might be better for outside the recording. Or before I start recording, ideally. But I will have to see who can benefit from Queek's weapon. Previous weapon, at least. Reduce upkeep. Oh, and I got an extra skill point. Perfect. And that greatly reduces upkeep for Queek. I am happy for that. That greatly increases my wealth. And it's perfectly timed. As I think it's starting to implement Storm Vermin. For my main front line. And we're getting pretty close to utilizing Doom Wheels for my main army too. It's just a question, what do I do with my Warp Lightning? Do I give it to my Engineer or not? That's something I'm going to have to really consider pretty soon. But nonetheless, a very effective turn. And a lot of money. Which is better spent elsewhere, let's be honest. 
And in all honesty, upgrading these probably doesn't help me much as it gives trade to my allies as opposed to me. Okay, I could see 20 gold a turn for a thousand being beneficial over time. Let's see. This is where it gets a little more pricey though that I seriously question if it's useful for me. It makes my ally happy, I guess. Oh yeah, and I was going to get income off you too, wasn't I? It's still again a question. How much does it cost for the tier 3? 200. 200 a turn extra. I'm just wondering if I can justify the cost. With how soon I might be going after Krasik 8 Peak. But I think it might be worth it. Because what I'll probably do is just grab all the surrounding territory first before getting Krasik 8 Peak. We'll upgrade the settlement here, get it more fortified, and you just continue repairing. Also, I have access to rights, which. Let's see, 22 turns for you. I am wondering about the Plague Priest, if there's a reason for me to get him. As I'm not trying to focus on spreading the plague, if I'm so honest, and I don't want to end my turn yet, as there's still plenty more to do, isn't there? Nope, I think I already moved them. I encamped with him. That's, that's what I was wondering about. Well, what do we have here? Summon directly. Public order. Who's this for? This is for my warlock. I'll summon him directly and see what happens here. I'm okay with a little bit of cash, but Grimgore is back. Ooh, Understudy established. Or, I like this. We're benefiting off this nicely. You're a builder. That's fine. Let's continue to expand my territory. That's paying off well for me. Although I did kind of forget about the stone mine towers a bit. How are you coming along? Still a work in progress. We'll continue expanding there and hopefully over time I can start changing them into producing food for me. But Grimgore, what are you up to? You have a maxed out army again which makes you a bit problematic although you're not as terrified as before. And you are raiding, which I do not like one bit. But you have room for this hag, which I would like to get rid of, but you are not quite the best at dealing with anything, really. Unfortunately, we need to work on that sub. And 7% chance of being wounded yourself. And where can Grimgore go? Well, it's impossible to tell because of his dang stance. Yeah, very low chance to actually injure you. And how well fortifies the Crooked Hook? It has fortifications. Yeah, I think Grimgore is just going to attack this region pretty soon and there's not much I could do about that. Unless I'm able to be bold enough to attack him first. But I still want to get my dang catapults. Which I'll be able to start procuring next turn. With that said, I got quite a decent garrison here, just no walls. Grimgore without a doubt is just going to ignore me and go after these points. Actually, let me scout what he's capable of. Can I scout his entire army out and judge if I'm capable of taking him on? I just really wish, really wish I had an extra play claw catapult. It's just, a, it's annoying that I had to randomly lose that. Hmm. Yeah, probably not worth it. And at least this gives me more spells. I feel like I could 
That was not what I wanted, dang it. Hmm. I thought that was a dang regular move. I guess we're committing to this regardless, but... I can't hurt him, I can do a lot of damage here, and this probably benefits me some. Just because of the linear pathway. Might make for a great kill zone. Do I commit... I'm just gonna save this here. I'm gonna commit to this, but... I just want to move and not ambush them, dang it. And this will definitely be the death of me if this fails. They got a lot of chariots, which I could... Well, I don't have a lot of spears, do I? Just two spears and a lot of guns. If I had more uh, spearmen, I could probably deal with these guys better. Which means I'm going to have to rely on just tying them up as much as possible. And just crippling their, their sent main force. Do I even want a chance gambling? It's only six power. It's not like I'm losing a lot from gambling, am I? There, that pays off. Definitely my reserve. Now, they do have the dang... Uh, Doom Divers, which are going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. And not a lot I could do there, but I have ranged weapons. Maybe I can use my Gisales to harass them if they get within fire range. Just a question of how to position everything. Because this looks like a great spot for shooting from the high ground. Which I think I want to do. I just got to be able to cover them. With st some storm vermin, probably. And the only problem is, I can't use this point very well afterwards. And this is more on my half of the map. The more machine gunners I can get up there, the better. That would be an amazing hot vantage point to deal with the negative of the straight line of sight that my gunners have to use. And I can use this too, which would be really good. Well, I promise, I am. If things go badly, I can't use this point very well. So I'm gonna have to really think on this. But Giselles might be great for back here. Without a doubt, they have the range to justify it. Plate claw catapult. Plate claw catapult can go here. Since they're mostly cavalry, in all honesty. I probably could beat them in a straight up fight. Could. They have the better army though. Let's not be... Let's not be arrogant about that fact. Their units would be stronger and better. And I don't have enough storm vermin to kind of equalize. But spears could be good here in the open field. Clan rats are just literally fodder. It's just going to be tricky. Yeah, just have them down here. Basically be the main buffer. Storm vermins are up at the top choke point. Which they can handle themselves pretty well. I think it's what I want to do. And Globideers are behind the clan rats to kind of cripple everything. Now we just got to distinguish who's who. Because I think Storm Vermin are great up here. At least one squad of Storm Vermin and then another one here to kind of be a second line of defense. Giselle's got their position mine. I want the gunners up top, if at all possible, and Globideers just benefit from the clan rats. And actually, you just be part of group two, with that said. Actually, no. Just have your own separate group. 
And we'll see how this goes. Oh, I can't actually go up there, dang it. After all that planning, I cannot go up there. Oh my, that's a disappointment. Because I saw... Yeah, you see the little line here, dang it. Why won't it let me up there? Well, we're going to have to change our plans a bit. Oh, get everyone over here. This is gonna suck. But at least I learned this if I choose to restart. I suppose. Only benefit here. Giselles, I don't know where I want to put you, ideally, but... Actually, it might be better here. And a little bit better vantage point. I don't need high ground, I think, for catapult catapults. They just can't be surrounded or get engaged, ideally. Get these guys up here. Although with concealment bombs, they could hide themselves pretty well. That's something I need to utilize with these things. I haven't been considering them the best, have I? I don't know if it's a good idea to summon clan rats here, but it could bring them into the line of fire. And then just obliterate what you can hit. Which is a good start there. Now, where are my Gisales? Just like a regular clan rats, that's fine. Get the spears going over here, ideally. Because that's where they're going. Please tell me you can fire. There we go. Now, hopefully they're able to shoot, ideally. Because my rattling gunners are not positioned the best. Alright, clan rats go over there. Wreck these units, ideally. Now, where are my spears over here, with that said? Well, they are fighting their chariots. So that is going for me. Can we continue to wreck them? Because spears are getting wrecked here, sadly. Not much I could do about that. Black Orcs here. Hopefully we can punish them quite a bit. And Rattling Gunners hopefully can... are still able to fire. Hopefully. Nope. Oh, they're just skirmisher mode right now. 
a lot of damage, but I don't. I think I'm just falling apart now because of lack of buffer. Good damage, but I don't think. Yeah, I thought maybe I could cripple him enough with the range weaponry. But that's not looking the case. I should have turned off all those skirmisher modes, which would have been a little more helpful here. And again, it is a question of what I should have prioritized. Maybe I should have gone after the Black Orcs instead. Maybe that's the impression I'm getting here. And can we... Yeah, I'm just getting demolished right now. Don't think there's much I could do here. So I think I'm just gonna reset that turn ideally. That was not a that was a mistake I did not want to do. I just wanted to do a regular move, dang it. And it seemed promising, but what did damage? Just really the boys did. And apparently they had six squads of black orcs, which I was not privy to. Yeah. I kind of tunnel vision on the the chariots, I think. And it's really the black orcs I need to focus and prioritize. Ideally. So while that was a bit of a mistake there, not paying attention to my stance. It's not like it gave me an opportunity to cancel that order either. Since this did, does look... yeah. Yeah, if you look at the movement, it's almost the exact same distance there. It's just maybe if I was paying attention over here at Dengorax, I might have been able to know I was still in the under... Was it? To use an underway pathways to maneuver. Although, it's still a question if I want to engage Grimgore or not. Since if I let him go down here, he's going to start steamrolling everything. And Misty Mountains and all that is kind of well fortified. Oh wait, I don't want to upgrade that yet. That was just rushed. And that will... Yeah, this is in the same region. The Misty Mountains, which will allow me to benefit from the getting the pl an extra Plague Claw Catapult, which real is, honestly is all I really want. I would like to deal with you, and I would like to slow Grimgore down, which... I don't know where Grimgore is even going to go with that said. But slowing down Grimgore is key, and my hero is only wounded, at the very least. Which somehow succeeded. That was not... That I was not expecting. But... Yeah, let's just at least make him a special sum. And I do have access to mo level 3 mobility, which might be important here. And what does... Just gives me a bunch of slaves, which... Don't provide a lot of additional benefit for me. Huh, interesting. Is that... Characters currently have discoverability. That's something I wasn't expecting. I wonder what that means. Am I going to lose the Kresik 8 Peak upgrade? I'm going to have to pay close attention to this, what happens in the preceding turns. Otherwise, you are surprisingly slowed. Which means I... It's a ridiculous idea, but... Would I... Would the extra buffer be enough for me to defend this region? Especially with the alarm tunnels. Giving me a bit extra garrison, too. Master 
And I'm pretty certain Grimgore is not going to intercept that, right? I don't know what the distance actually is, if I'm honest. But just in case, I don't know what exactly the limitations are for the underway, but if I can at least be prepared to defend, that would be good. I just don't want to go after him yet. Is what I've learned, especially without enough of a buffer. And it's not possible for me to get... Well, I'm... I would like to get... It gets sap sap, but I don't think you're helpful is the problem. Is the play clock catapult better? Anti-infantry. So yeah, you're again. For some reason I had in my head you would be better against the cavalry, but you're kind of designed to fight the black orcs for me. As are my rattling gunners, which is why I probably should have prioritized the black orcs somehow. That is a bit of the question, how could I do that? Especially with cavalry around to kind of easily dive them. is a bit of the problem. Either way. That's neither here or there. We got garrisons being built. I don't even... I would like to replace this with something else, honestly, but we'll go with it. And what else? Queek, I want you to go get your well-deserved upgrade. You can deal with Grimgore yourself pretty soon. Maybe. And we'll occupy a settlement. It does kill off a lot of my troops, but that's not a problem. And we can benefit from food with the province bonus, I think. Well, this single-handedly, I'm still losing public order, which is a bit of a problem. But a lot of that is because these structures are not built, too, which might be another factor. Yeah, we'll keep that B for now. Yeah, political instability, that's part of the reason. So another... Yeah, I think I could just switch over to food now. It does give me corruption, which doesn't really hinder me too much at the moment at the moment <laughs> excuse me I had to see, sneeze a moment but I don't like you and that's twice in a row you failed you are slacking your old age your high level there stun crick Ickbolt on the other hand is still fresh and young in his tw er, early 20s. He's got plenty going for him. Although, it's still a question, well, we just go with the route we've been doing before with our assassins. Now, actually, if I assault the main army now when I siege it, that will greatly weaken them. Probably a lot more than the dang Garrison, at least. Oh. That wasn't... I was expecting this to have walls and everything for some reason. Alright, let's get to this fight. This one's definitely winnable. By quite a good margin. And... They have almost no cavalry, which I... Even the few that they have, my spears can at least deal with them decently. Well... I have a ridiculous amount of spears. Let's not kid ourselves. Win battle. And good use of my rat ogres will be important for us, I think. But we'll play around and see how it goes. Yeah, you're also stock, but... Yeah, you have Vanguard and stock. Actually, you could flank the range units for me. If I do this right. If the AI doesn't cheat, that is. That's a big factor to this. If the AI can see my stocky units even when they're not supposed to, and dang it, look at that terrain. This is why I would love to see the terrain layout before actually engaging. As this does not look like it favors me at all. And I am a little worried. 
How about my gunner runners going over here? I can't get some gunner runners over here, but not much. So I think it might be smarter just to keep them together in this corner. And ideally have them in squads of two. With a third in the middle there to kind of spread them out a bit, maybe. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with the Rat Ogres. This is not a good layout. Not in the slightest. All I can really hope is my Rat Ogres can provide support for the Gunrunners when the Cavalry chase after them. That's all I can hope for. And there's a lot of water here which doesn't benefit me in the sliced eater. Because of how it slows me down and not their cavalry, I think. Is how it works. And actually, let me have the spears kind of behind my main clan rats. As that will make it a little bit easier to reposition maneuver them for said cavalry. And you guys are just in the middle of the army, and again, I think Rat Ogres are just providing support for my Slingers. Now, only problem is I think I might be too clumped up here. Yeah, wreck these guys nicely for me. I don't quite have the armor for it, but... I did do, uh, do a notable amount of damage to him, at least. And hopefully it helps. I just gotta get an easy tally of who's what. Because these guys are already getting wrecked, that's fine. That's what we what we want to see. And just clobber them. Ideally. But if they're going to come towards me, that makes my life easier. And I would like all these guys to fire at the boys. I think they're a little bit better. Better position, at least. Red Ogres, what can you do? No, not much yet. But we are damaging the boys pretty well. I'm just taking a lot of damage myself. Can we harass these guys? Sadly, not quite. Not quite the way I want. Just keep right there, defending, and... Yeah, just crush the boar boys. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But hopefully we can do enough damage. Let's just get more reinforcements in here. Poor boys getting wrecked here. That's good. Slingers are doing the job here. Uh, it was, but now the rat ogres are getting surrounded. Probably not as effective as it could be. Now, Warlock, what are you going to do? They got the wall going, that's fine. I should be able to outrun them for a bit. While well, these guys down below, just pepper. Shriek, shriek. 
Now, how many units can I get? I don't know if that's as effective as it could have been, but... Hopefully it helps. Because I need backup. Yeah, my rattle girls is getting hit, pounded again, dang it. They don't seem to last very long, do they? I thought it was a good strategy, but... It's not working out the best. And they're also in the trees, which will make it a little harder for me to kind of crush them. Alright guys, get going there. Because I need to do something about the ranged attacks. Which ideally were what the Rattlegers were supposed to do. It's just not working out very well. Get the slingers going, get them to safety. Okay, my lords retreated, so that's another important factor. And group everyone back up, and hopefully we can finally disrupt these guys a bit. Although, these poor boys are being annoying. My engineers routed, so not much I could do there. Okay, they're finally broken. And just chase after them. Maybe the Rattlegers could continue to route their archers a bit. And my Warlock is back. Good. Can I get away with another Death Frenzy is another question. Since I don't have a good selection of skills to use against orcs, don't I? I would like to pierce their armor, which I'm currently lacking. And I... Dang it, I thought you were guys fighting on higher elevation. This would be embarrassing if I were to lose this fight. But... Let's hope that we can make this work. Oh well, I probably deserve it anyway. Because dang it, my slingers and rat ogres did not do what they were supposed to do. Now, if only I could have an easy way to tell which one of these are my slingers, dang it. But at least that worked. It makes for an intense fight, but considering the advantages, it's definitely a sloppy if I'm going to lose this. Get it out, get it out. Rat ogres sadly fleeing, but they'll survive another day. And I have stock, so if I'm lucky, maybe I can stay hidden. Can we break their units? Yeah, I gotta group these guys in a separate group. That might make my life a little bit easier. That way I know where the heck my main slinger army is at. And they are currently hidden so they can start harassing the boys up here, I'm hoping. Gotta be mindful if they're stalking or not. Or at least concealed. Damage the boys as much as you can. Although, trees make that a little bit awkward. So let me just use it to my advantage and hope that they're facing the right way.
No, stop wavering. I don't want you wavering. Your spells could be really important here. And actually, because you have stalk, you can fight in plain sight a little bit, which won't, won't give you a lot of protection, but it's still a good alternative. Now, I don't know where the war boss is, alas. Oh, he's right here. Killing him will seal the deal, if I could pull it off. Again, it's still a question if I'm utilizing my spells properly, because they got a lot of fresh health units still, but... Four hundred health left on that cursed thing. Can we harass these guys a bit? We have lots of ammo. Maybe not for the gunner runners so much. Get everyone rallied. I gotta deal with their dang archers. Which is not something I could do, but uh, I do have the height advantage, which should help a notable amount if I get these guys friggin' up here to take advantage of it. And actually... Oh, how do you do melee attack? I think that would be better here, because I'm faster than these archers, and... With the amount of ammo they have, they're going to be important. Yep, never mind. We got boys coming in, so that's going to be a bit problematic. Come on, break. Break. I don't want to fight these guys anymore if I can help it. And then just harass the boys. Now, can we just blow up these guys, ideally? Since they're nicely clumped up. Kill off the orc boys. Yeah, that's a bit of a mess, having to do that position like I did. But, I think this is a good learning experience still. Especially if we can keep the orc boys from running with these night... Night runners, ideally. We still have two orc boys to fight, but I do have plenty of ammo if I'm smart about this. And sadly, I don't think I can deal with these guys the best, sadly. Oh, there goes my Warlock, finally. He is no longer part of the equation. These guys are most important. And I'm hoping I can outrun these guys. That would be the dream with my Night Runners. All right, get moving there. I don't know why my lord is wavering, or who exactly is wavering, but... Chase after him and cripple him, ideally. While the orc boys are running. We're not out of the woods yet, so long as my lord's alive, this is going to be important, though. And honestly, I want you to melee. 
ideally. I am messing up with the gun runners a slight bit, but you're shattered, so you can help these gun runners out. And I think we're just faster than them. Yeah, I could just run them down. That should have been something I would have been to making better use of. If I were so honest, but... Time to invoke our inner Skaven shenaniganry. As we clean up this mess. Now, can we fight them? I want to believe we can, especially with a relatively competent Night Runner squad and surrounding forces. Just gotta get my actual slingers that are shooting to safety. And that negates their charge there a bit. Actually, you could just fight those orc boys for a bit. Now, is their lord finally gone? Lord fled, okay. They just, the lord is finally gone, which is going to be what turns the tide here. I want to believe. And I think the swamp even hurts their defense a bit. Even if they didn't really have much armor to begin with. Alright, warlord, you go over here. All right, run away, guys. Run away. Show these guys the door, and then clean up this final orc squad. They still have ammo, which is going to be annoying, but... I have ammo as well, if I really care for that. A bit of a drawn-out fight, but I think I like it. As this is where I can learn... How to get the most out of my mobility, which is definitely a trait Skaven should be utilizing. Although, I think my Night Runners are still going to lose this fight, sadly. I still have Slingers to do damage, I just don't have much of a buffer now. Bit of a problem there, but I do have high ground. Can they get concealed? I don't know what's the criteria for them to get hit in, but... This is their last buffer unit here. And if I can crush it, that'd be great. Especially with some relatively decent high ground, hopefully. Don't worry, you'll be fine. We only have two units left, especially once we kill off these orc boys. Perfect. Probably my own mistake to foregain it as close as it was, because my rat ogres and slingers probably didn't contribute nearly as much as they should have, dang it. But that was still an incredibly fun bout. I am happy with that outcome. Since I believe that was supposed to be mine to win there, but again, it was almost entirely generic clan rats and a couple of rat ogres, which hopefully they did, they did not die. And more mess below definitely would have helped there, and a little more variety in spells might have been useful, but again, I was thinking about the usual armor, Decay, which honestly is not a good spell against savage orcs, let's be honest. And their war boss did a crap ton of damage. Let's see. Gunner runners, without a doubt, were MVPs of this bout. I think that much is safe to say. Now. I don't. Yeah, I just want to capture this. Might as well just capture it. I don't want them to have the settlement still. Especially when it completely eliminates them from the equation. A bit of a fun bout. 
and I only get one level for my efforts. Alas. Oh well. What can you do? Again, we're going to focus on logistics here. You're probably going to resupply a lot of my army. And let's just focus on untainted and recruitment costs for you. Make that a little bit cheaper. And in the meantime, just benefit off your well-deserved break. Scorch could have actually might have been useful in that bout if I had it. Hard to say. Where Warp Lightning was good against armor, it was a bad spell to have for that type of fight. And I should have increased mobility. Since again, you're more logistics and... Just keep an eye on the Empire, ideally. But still, I am happy with that engagement. And we have a settlement over here which sounds like they're part of Clan Eshin. And we can even see a large portion of Clan Eshin right now. I'm going to have to go over and have a look pretty soon. Otherwise, what are my other settlements looking? I am a little bit worried. I am revealed, I think is what that's telling me. I think. Because apparently a character is making it easier for me to get spotted. I just didn't know that was actually a something I could do. So we will see if I lose Krasik 8 Peak next turn or not. Karak 8 Peak rather. Because yeah, demolishing this probably is not going to help me sadly. Now I'm just trying to figure out what to do with my money. I want to continue upgrading but I want to find the best investment form. Although how is my Under Empire coming up here? Did I check you? There's a lot you can do. So let's reduce exposure a bit. I almost wonder if I want deeper tunnels because this is a decent amount of income. And when I get more income off you, that's, that's going to be useful. Yeah, I don't think I need fission here yet. It's when I start grabbing the other territories, but 20% that give I'll get a little bit extra income here compared to... Well, in all honesty, it's about the same income. It's just a question of the other benefits. I could potentially get more income here with max tier. Or if I could be so bold, maybe I can get benefit from both of them after, after a certain point. We will see. Otherwise, I think the only thing left to do is just try and fortify my settlements here. And see what Grimgore has to offer. I'll just hang on to my money for extra recruitment yes, you're definitely going to need it for a bit Let's see Queek's already on the move you're already on the move at least Queek can regenerate relatively quickly oh let's upgrade you because that's probably important uh, do I really want to upgrade these I do honestly wonder if it's actually benefit me or not but I can wait a bit. Lamy has a little bit of a different story though. But it's gonna be a while till I get growth four, so just hang on to that and see what Grimgore does. Alright, more events here. Let's see, bonus experience, rocket boots, huh? Oh, it gives the Foe Seeker ability and fear. Interesting. I'm trying to remember which one is uh, Shife there. Is that my Warlock or not? Or I can invest in the project and get something decent here. That could be useful for a Warlock, let's be honest. And you're continuing the raid. Grimgore's try as he might is coming after me. 
And I think combat is inevitable. And I don't think I can benefit off these items in time. Potion of healing, crown of command. I'm wondering where my boots are that I just got. If I'm so honest, I don't know where that's hiding that I just unlocked. As you would benefit nicely from it. Oh, it's a rocket boot. Okay. Probably a downside to do this. As you probably will have very little in defense when Grimgor comes attacking. Which does honestly question if I stay here or not. Warp Lightning would be good against the Black Orcs. Weak against armor. So I think that is the plan there. Death Frenzy. Yeah, it just makes my use more potent, which is probably better, in all honesty, with my Storm Vermin. If I were to use that at all. Hmm. I don't think I can stay here, sadly. As I'm not going to benefit from the alarm. Yeah, and of course... I'm stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Hmm. I could try to get the Regiment of Renown to help deal with the cavalry. Try and commit to this. And that gives me a boost of some kind. Not much of one, though. Rock blobbers. Yeah, I was kind of worried about the cavalry. Maybe I shouldn't be worried about the cavalry so much. But still. I may have made a terrible mistake coming into this. Against Grimgore. And it is possible for me to run, but... Is that the right idea or not? Apparently... It said I was discovered, wasn't I? Hmm. So they could destroy that, alas. Especially since... Our Dwarven friends have finally conquered Kazakh A Peak, or Karak A Peak. This is an awkward predicament, and I think the smart thing to do would be just to retreat. Do have better spots to fortify, though. In three turns, maybe, if I afford in this stuff. And what about Spite Peak? It's not really fortified either, so I think it's just safer to back off. Of Although, it does heavily come down to if I could slow down Grimgore again or not. I doubt it, but... Can we get lucky twice? Critical failure. He's wounded, but not dead. That's the important thing there. And if I can retreat, I should hopefully be okay. But I guess I'm going to have to abandon the settlement. I'm going to abandon the settlement. Try and find a better fortified position. And in the meantime, Queek is going to go on his little crusade, I guess, down south here. Actually... Is that the right choice? I got Dwarf Gouger. I can perhaps bring an end to Grimgore once and for all, but at the same time, I, I have no reason to go over here. I'm going to lose a lot of territory without a doubt, but I don't like all this dang attrition I'm suffering from. I would rather not deal with attrition. But, nope. Let me replenish, because, yeah, just that one little space is a big deal. 
And I'm gonna have to really plan out how I'm gonna follow up on this. Otherwise, you have nine more skill points left to you. Magical resistance could be good. And you basically got all your combat skills sorted out. Now it's just a question on how else I utilize you. Again, I have nine skill points left, so I'm going to have to really plan this out. Probably scouting would be a good one. Increase chance of magical items, as I don't think... I don't think I want you going anywhere else. Outside of just in an army. Assassin, you're leveled up despite your continual uh, failure. And what's this? Oh yeah, fleet foot. Increase your speed. Yes, please. And kill this guy off properly, please. Not a critical success, but good enough. And you just replenish. Not much else to really say there. And what can I do here? Just search the ruins. I think it might be better to try and harass Grim Gore. Weaken him for any counter-attack plays. As I think we've done everything we need to over here with the Savage Orcs gone. You are still needing repair. That is fine. That's just a work in progress otherwise. And yeah, I think we'll leave it this. Check, see what the turn brings. Unlock my additional upkeep cost for Night Runners. And see if I can elude Grimgore or not. Before we end off. Well, this was kind of inevitable, and there's not much I can do about this. I could try and fight this, but we'll just auto-resolve, since it's obvious it's going to be a defeat, and apparently, not even a pointed... Not even a single... Oh, they did lose some troops, it just shows that they lost none on the score screen, though, or the results. The Crooked Moon are no more, at least the Mutinous Faction. Yes, I lost the settlement. Promising candidates. Is what is there noteworthy I want to do? Because they got another army of goblins coming this way. With more black orcs. And Crooked Fang Port is not really a well fortified territory for me, but I can get you developed. At the very least. And I'm sprint. Am I? Am I technically garrison right now? Oh, I'm maxed out anyway, so it's not like I could benefit from the settlement. Or gain extra play claw. I honestly do want to get rid of one of the rattling gunners. It's not available in the, in the current stance, so I can't recruit extra units anyway. But I feel like 8 extra play claw catapults would have been better. Or is going to be better here. Otherwise I don't think there's much else left to do. Besides just continue on Queek's little magical journey here. Kind of uh, neglecting his duties for his empire. His realm. But he will come back stronger. And he can crush some orcs as he goes. I don't think we have to worry. Otherwise, just upgrade. Fortify, I guess, is the name of the game. And with that said, I do wonder... Actually, let me take a look at Tech Tree. Is there anything I can get for defense? Yeah. I want the choke points to fortify here. So I think I just destroyed a breeding pit then. And if in preparation for that, I think we're going to end it off here. We have Foya Grimgore for the time. But without a doubt, there's going to be a lot of problems with him in the future. I think that much is certain. Let's get more income. I'm, I wasn't privy to you before. And I s I'll look at this later, I guess, on what I want to do. Thank you everyone for tuning in. 
I will see you next time.